So today is the feast day of Our Lady of Knock. Now, um, I think for a lot of us, maybe up until 10 or 15 years ago, no matter where you lived in the country, Knock was far away. Every, you know, it always took like three, four hours to get to Knock, regardless of where you lived. It's kind of this miraculous place uh, where when the roads are around it were not great. So um, anybody who used to travel to Knock back in the day, in those, the old buses, I mean, modern, modern day, we, we don't call them buses anymore. Now they're called coaches. But back then they were called buses and they used to back in the back they'd bounce away the whole way along those around the belly harness roads like there'd be a smell of diesel in, in the back of the bus and basically getting to knock up until recently was fairly miserable and then when you got there it just again it just has this kind of miraculous microclimate it was always raining it could be middle of august but it didn't matter it was always very it was always miserable in knock uh, but anyway things have improved things have improved uh, obviously the roads around it now are much better, you can get there a lot quicker, it's still far away but you can get there a lot quicker uh, and coaches have improved so it's a lot much more kind of a comfortable ride but what's very interesting, I think there, there are two interesting, two very very interesting things about Knock. Uh, one is simply amazing and the other is kind of unfortunate. <coughs> we'll start with the unfortunate one first. I think in Ireland Knock is a kind of an undiscovered treasure. I think it's really underestimated uh, the, the power, the beauty, the, the, just the, the privilege of, of having a Marian apparition site in our country. And so often you see uh, grottos and corners of, you know, round, well, not corners or roundabouts. Circles don't have corners, Father Patrick. But in, in corners or near roundabouts, or in, you know, of our, our grottos of Our Lady of Lourdes or Fatima, or whatever it may be. But you don't see knock. Even in, in churches, you'll, you'll have a side altar of Our Lady of Lourdes, Lady of uh, Fatima, whatever it is, but not Our Lady of Knock. Uh, and it just, it's, it's interesting how, how we ourselves as Irish people don't necessarily recognize how incredible or how beautiful Knock is. Okay. Personally, this is a personal thing, I believe Knock is going to be rediscovered. I think the, 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 the value of Knock and the beauty of Knock will be rediscovered. Um, maybe in our generation, maybe, maybe next generation. And particularly as a place of priestly renewal. As a place of priestly renewal. Now, why do I say that? Okay, so if you look at the, 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 the good news part of the story of Our Lady of Knock. So when Our Lady appears, you see, what we have here is it's just, it's, it's a, a, a phenomenally uh, profound yet simple image at the same time. Typically divine to have something so, so meaningful, so just um, in supato, they say in Italian. Soaked, mm. so 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 profoundly uh, theological, uh, with with such great depth in such a simple image, or dare I say, two images, two kind of apparitions going on simultaneously. So on one side, you have Our Lady. So this all happened in uh, eighteen seventy nine, on uh, August twenty first. So Our Lady with her hands raised in prayer. So our, our Lady's intercession for us. She's not praying for herself. She's okay. She's praying for us, her children. So her hands are, are raised in prayer and her head, her eyes raised towards heaven. Uh, just a, 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 a beautiful image of, of Our Lady's role, Our Lady's vocation to intercede and pray for us. Then you have uh, St. John who's holding a book of, of Gospels and is, is preaching. So... The power of scripture, the power of scripture, the need to, to rediscover the word of God and, 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 and its power and what it says to me and what it has said to the church over the centuries and how it guides us and how it consoles us. Uh, there's, uh, there's an, admittedly, there's an awful lot in it and lots that we won't understand, but the, the power and the depth and the beauty of scripture to rediscover that and then the, the silent prayerful intercession of St. Joseph, hands joined, head bowed, in prayer. So the protector of the church, the defender of the Holy Family, terror of demons, head bowed, in prayer. The attitude that, 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 that all of us should have, that our heads are bowed in prayer. We're not the center of the uh, attention here at all. Our heads are bowed in prayer because of someone much, much greater than us here. And that's the other part of the operation. And the lamb on the altar, surrounded by angels. Now what do you have here? Now you have Our Lady and the Eucharist, or the Eucharist and Our Lady. These two 
essential, non-negotiable columns of our faith, the Eucharist is actually the center of the apparition in Knock. I know, obviously, and rightly so, there's a lot of emphasis placed on Our Lady, St. John and St. Joseph, but the center of it actually is these three figures, everything they do is focused actually on the Lamb and the altar. So Our Lady, who's she praying to? Well, she's, she's praying to God. She's praying to Jesus, her immolated son, her son sacrificed and offered to the Father. We have St. John preacher, who, who's, who's he preaching about? Well, he's, he's preaching about our redemption, uh, the, the healing available to us because of Christ's sacrifice. And we have, again, St. Joseph praying. Well, again, who's he praying to? He's praying actually to his son, who's also God. Okay, so the center of it then is, is, is the, the, the altar, the lamb, surrounded by angels. So, interestingly, the lamb is actually standing. So, this could mean like it's, it's the victorious lamb, the lamb that was slain, that is now risen. So, the, the lamb that has, such has given its life, but has shown itself to be victorious over sin, victorious over death. So, the lamb is standing again, surrounded by the glory of the angels. Now, this is the mass. This is the mass, the, 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 the lamb offered to the father, surrounded by angels. The, and all, all of this for, for us, just the, 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 the amazing gift that, that the Holy Eucharist is to us. And that, this, is the, this is the apparition. You know, so it's like there's so much there. Like, as I say, you've got Our Lady of Sacred Scripture, St. Joseph, but then Jesus, the, the immolated, the sacrifice lamb. If we were to, 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 to delve into this, to rediscover this, I mean, what a renewal it would be for priests. To rediscover their own vocation. To rediscover the power of staying close to Our Lady, to have her intercession in their lives. To, to rediscover the, the, the depth and the beauty of Scripture. To rediscover uh, the simple, humble attitude of prayer that St. Joseph had. And then most importantly, to rediscover the centrality of the Eucharist. This, is, this isn't an optional extra or some sort of a bonus or... or or even something that, that, that we can be a bit awkward about. You know, cause it's so kind of supernatural. Let's just talk about easier things like, like being, being good and being a good steward of creation and recycling. They're easy because there's no kind of miracle or mystery there. It's just all us, us doing good things. That's, that's nice, but I'm not ordained to talk about that. I'm ordained to, to make Christ present on the altar, to absolve sins. That's what the Lord has called me to. That's what priesthood is to be another Christ. So this is why I think Knock will be rediscovered because uh, I think we, we've, only, we've only scratched, just scratched the surface really of what the, the apparition in Knock is about. These 15 witnesses then who, who see this silent image on the gable end of their local little parish church. And they knelt in prayer. Immediately they, they, they were drawn to pray seeing this. And Archdeacon Kavanagh, the parish priest there, a week beforehand, had finished a hundred day of masses for the Holy Souls. So a hundred masses for all the Holy Souls, a couple of days break, and then the apparition occurred. So he was, no doubt, uh, by all accounts, he was a, a very prayerful and humble man. And remember, this is 1879, so uh, Ireland was economically not not in a good place at all. Things were very, very simple, especially out in the, the west of Ireland there. It would have been very, uh, a very difficult um, and often tragic kind of lifestyle. You can imagine infant mortality rate would have been quite high, cot deaths and miscarriages and uh, alcoholism if they could even afford it, even just like subsistence farming just to get by would have taken all of your time. And in all of this, Difficulty and misery, the people were just so faithful, so faithful to their rosary. When priests were being hunted down and the mass was hard to find, uh, all of that, people just remained so, so faithful, this simple faith. And then in the, 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 the dirt of the surrounding land there, they kneel down and they see the beauty of this apparition. So Nock has, I think in Ireland, a great future. I think it has a future of 
not just as a, as a place of pilgrimage, like it's not just a nice little holiday place. I think it has a, uh, will have a central role in the renewal of, of our spirituality, of our Catholic faith, our Catholic faith, to rediscover Jesus in the Eucharist and everything else that guides us to him. That Jesus being the source and summit of the Christian life and everything else points to him. Our Lady of Sacred Scripture, St. Joseph, all the saints, everything, everything, all the other sacraments point to the Eucharist. So I think it'll be a, a centre of Eucharistic renewal as well. Eucharistic adoration for all people. So it's, I think that there are amazing things yet to happen. But today, we remember the humble prayer of of St. Joseph in this year dedicated to him. As he stands beside Our Lady with her hands raised in prayer and all, all those, there, there are three hearts raised to God. If we too can assume that attitude today so that our hands may be joined and our head bowed in reverence before our Eucharistic Lord. Amen. <laughs>